So welcome, I'm Joshua Delisle, the designer maker, and I have for you today another laser engraver. So this is the Creality Laser Falcon. Creality are a very well-known 3D printing manufacturer. I actually own one of their 3D printers, the Ender 3, which has been fantastic. So again, just like the longer model, they've put their technology into building these machines. So not only do they have their own self-developed algorithms to help this machine run smoothly and cleanly, but this can be used offline using just a single button. As expected, everything is beautifully made, wonderfully finished, and even comes with a built-in spirit level. So what I have is the 10 watt version, and what I like here is, is it's single screw to get the height adjustment here. They've even given you a little panel which gives you the different heights for different thicknesses, and they recommend for cutting thick material, you want to actually lower it down to that lowest setting. That makes sense because of the where the focal point is in the beam, you kind of want that in the center of the wood. So I can lower it down like that, remove this little plate and this hangs off the side of the gantry. What's also a nice feature is that the shroud is magnetic. This will make changing this system to air assist really simple. So I'm going to do some standard tests that I'm going to do on all models including this 8mm hardwood ply and then we'll move into a design and build which I'm sure you'll enjoy. But first of all I've got some surprise boxes to open. So let's first of all see what's inside this one. So well, these look like standoffs of some sort. I guess this is so you can get a varied height if you get thicker material. These look like rubber feet to protect the surface. Stainless steel backing plate. And this is a honeycomb board. So combined with the stainless backing board, this is designed to protect your surfaces, especially if you've got a wooden working table. The honeycomb allows the laser to pass through the material without there being much smoking on the underneath. To illustrate the point, I've got a steel working table, but you can see the laser has engraved shapes and stuff onto it but not only that you've got all the tars and resins from the wood i've been using kind of billowing out and sticking to my table so it's good to keep your surface clean and that honeycomb will come in handy so this is how everything looks with the extended height and what we have is an extra 135 millimeters or five and quarter inches of extra height so that's going to enable me to have much thicker pieces of wood with plenty of room for adjustment. Not only that, we can actually put a rotating y-axis, so for engraving bottles or mugs as a such. But now let's see what's in this little package. So in here we have Creality Zone Air Assist. So the rubber tube, some quick Velcro fittings, some grub screws, another special magnetic shroud, the Air Assist nozzle and an adapter. And what's actually good to know, there's actually a piece of glass in there and that's going to stop any soot or debris from blowing back up into the laser itself. I like that. And of course we have this compact pump. So let's plug it in and see how it sounds. And now we'll turn it on. Well, it's hardly making a sound at all. I like these little rubber feet, because it's actually vibrating a fair bit, but that keeps it nice and shock absorbed. And there's actually a filter in here. If I pull this off, so that can get cleaned, or I could cut out a new one to fit there. Perfect for dusty environments. Well, that's plenty. Let's now test Creality's cutting capacity and we'll insert our SD card just in here and we'll turn it on. Those beeps let me know it's ready and now we're ready to cut. So the first time we press the button, the machine homes itself. Now it's found where the cutting part is on the file and it draws a line around it and continues to do it until you're ready. You can adjust your things at this point. Now I can press and hold to cancel that. So if I just hold for more than three seconds or until it bleeps, that's turned the machine off and it's gone back into standby mode. So if we try that again, I'll press once. I'm happy with where it is, so I'll turn on the pump and now I can press again to start the cut. Let's have a look at the results of this test then. We've got full penetration on one pass with 100% power and 100 millimeters per minute. And over on this test, I've tried doing passes at different speeds. So we can see in four passes, we could get through at just 60% power. And what I'm hoping to achieve with doing more passes and less power is that you'll get a cleaner cut. So reducing all of that blacking on the edge if I can. Let's apply it to a project. So let's make that start. 
and I think we're ready to cut. So what do we think of those results then? So if you like these boxes, these will be available on my Etsy store. I've got a huge range from the tiniest ones to the biggest ones that these machines can make. And I've also designed them to cope with all the different thicknesses. The tractor and my son's name here I actually did on Lightburn. Now it must be said you have to use Lightburn in order to use the one button function on the Creality Falcon. I couldn't do it just using the free GBRL software. That being said, there's many benefits to using Lightburn that I didn't quite realize. I can actually preset the kerf width, meaning that the thickness of the laser cut and my sanding could all be accounted for in the software, so everything could be a much tighter fit. And I can set layers, so what I can do is set the machine to engrave and then cut a shape out all on one program. So why don't I show you a quick workflow on using Lightburn? We'll see what the little man thinks of this as well. Welcome to Lightburn. This is how the layout looks like. And if you look along the sides here, uh, you've actually got tools that you can actually design things. So you don't even need CAM or CAD software for this. So the first thing you'll need to do on Lightburn is go down to th this part here. This is devices. And what you'll need to do here is click on import. And then you want this file right here. CR Laser Falcon LBDEV. Now, if you don't have this with your laser, then uh, I'll surely find a link for you if you don't have it. Now that I've got it on devices, now all the parameters and all the speeds and settings will be set to the Laser Falcon. Now I had an idea to make a little leather wallet that we could cut out and do some stitching on. So why don't we try that actually? Clicked on the rectangular tool and I'm just going to click somewhere on here. And there we are, we've got a rectangle and right over here in the corner you've got cuts and layers. So this has all the information of the shape that I've just put on here. So at the moment I've got it set on an engraving speed, so we can drop that now down to two and a half thousand. Uh, we'll do that on maximum power. We'll do that in two passes, just to make sure. So the size of the shape I've got up here, you can see I've got the X position, Y position, that's it relative to the laser. The parameters of this are actually stuck at 400 by 400, which is what you want really, if I zoom out. This is the size of the bed of the laser, as you can see. So whatever we design, it will be relative to the zero position, which is here. And at the top here, we've got width and height. I'll look at a card in my pocket quickly. 85 millimeters by 55 millimeters. There you go, that's our actual shape of card. So I'm gonna right click and duplicate that, and then I'm gonna change that to be exactly five millimeters bigger. So we'll make that 65 by 95. Now I can actually freely move these by hand, these widths. So if we drop that down, so we've got a part of the card sticking out. Yeah, I think we'll round that up to 75 up here. You can obviously change that to Imperial. And then let's add some stitching. So if I go around this with some stitching, some little holes I think would work well. We'll make that one millimeter. I'm thinking I'd like this circle to come kind of central. I think that works rather well. And now there's a little key here. If I click on this, zoom out, you can see I can add lots of little stitch holes. Yeah, that works well for me. And boom, we've got a load of holes for stitching. And what I can do is copy those, duplicate, 
And I'll drag that over here. What I'll also do is select one of these bottom ones and do the same thing but in the X direction. So another neat trick is that we can click on this button here, which says radius. If I set that to three, then if we select using the arrow tool up here, the shapes. All right, if we click on the radius tool and then see how it's highlighted there now, if we click there, see that? That's now created lovely radii. We'll do that on all four corners. There, that's looking like the right shape now. So if we go back onto the select tool and select that card shape that we first put in, let's delete that. Now that is now the blank for our piece of leather. But let's put the let's put my maker's mark in the middle there. If we go on file and then import. Now I've got my maker's mark here and it's in PNG format. So it has no background to it, if you see what I mean. Let's click that and open. And wow, it's massive on here, but not to worry. Let's reduce the width and height. Let's lock those parameters. We'll turn it down to, I reckon, 40 millimeters. There we go, that's much better. Now it's off center at the moment, so let's centralize that. Now if my bed is exactly 400 by 400, let's put the X and Y position halfway, 200 by 200. And now that's directly in the middle, and I've stated it in the middle here. So the rest of everything else isn't in the middle. So what we can do is select everything. And then I'll deselect my maker's mark by press holding control. There we go. And I'll do the same. There we go. Everything is now centered perfectly. So if we go on layers here, you can see I've got my image. If I right click that, it'll highlight it. And also if I right click the other option there, it, you can see those are now separated into two different layers. Um, so if I double click on the image one, I can set these different parameters. So we're going to try and engrave leather 3000 millimeters per minute at 25%. That should work well. And also I want the order of operation to be different. So what I'm going to do is select image and move it up. There we go. I want it to engrave first and then cut out. Uh, but there's obviously two parts to this wallet, so I need to do two of these. So if I duplicate and I'll drag that over, keep them close together so I'm not wasting material. And then I could probably select all of them together and then put that centrally. There we go. That should be enough to create our wallet. So lastly, up here, I uh, changed it from fill to line that's going to give me the actual cutout rather than um, engrave the whole thing and uh, to check everything is in order we can go up here to preview and there it says it will take 14 minutes and 52 seconds and i can also press play and i can watch it in real time or speed it up and I can see the order of process just to make sure everything's working correctly. And now that we're done, I can go into my bottom right hand corner and click on save G code. Now I can save this to the SD card and take it to the laser. All right, here's a bit of leather suede that I've managed to find. One button press. Let's see how that goes then.
Okay then, conclusion. Now I am paid to do these reviews. The only time that I do a review for free is if I actually really want the piece of equipment. So I'm gonna try and test it out because I wanna see if it's any good for myself. Because I've received so many of these lasers now, I do insist that they pay me for each one. Does that mean that I'm gonna be biased? Absolutely not. That money pays for my time to test these things properly so I can iron out all the little problems that you guys love to face. So let's start with the one button feature. Now personally, I actually really like the simplicity of it. I like the fact that it's plug, play, two clicks of a button and off we go. However, I was taken back with the fact that you have to have light burn. Now light burn you have to pay for as well. It's not a lot and it's a very professional piece of equipment and I'm kind of glad that I got into using it because I would have just used the freebie otherwise. But I almost used my hammer to send this back to them in bits because I was so frustrated that my CAD software and the free software GBRL wasn't working with this machine. Now if you have your laptop or computer linked straight to this, it, it isn't a problem. You can use the GBRL software with that. But for the offline function, only light burn will work which was the main feature of this. Now, as far as the 10 watt diode laser con is concerned, it's brilliant. Can you compare it to a CO2 commercial laser? Absolutely not. And I have in my possession a CO2 laser, so we'll check out the differences between the two at a later video. Now, there is so much more you can do with a 10 watt laser. We can engrave stainless, we can cut acrylic, and if it's one that's capable of doing high speeds, we can engrave cardboard. The most useful thing for me is whether it can engrave stainless and whether it can cut wood. That is pretty much all I'm ever gonna use them for. It was really nice engraving the wood as well to a certain point, because you can actually cut in a depth and you can be specific about the depth if you get the setting just right. You can even engrave channels for bits of wood to slide into as well. We'll have a look at that at a later date. All in all, Creality do produce really good quality equipment. You can see that by the quality of finish on this machine. It certainly performs well and accurately. And once I'd understood that you do need light burn for this machine, it was incredibly simple to set up. But if you want me to touch on any other points or you've got something more to bring to this, then do say so in the comments. And if you disagree with anything that I've brought to the table here, that's fine also. I think the more we share from our experiences, the better. So if you did find this helpful, if you do like, subscribe, and even share this on WhatsApp with a friend, it really, really helps this channel and I would certainly appreciate it. But what I would encourage you to do now is to get off YouTube and go out there into the real world and forge for yourselves a life worth living. And I'll see you in the next episode. Lastly, I wish you could have heard the sweet little things my little boy was saying. But I didn't have the uh, audio turned on, did I? Anyway, I'll finish with some happy smiles. Bye-bye.